Hello everyone, welcoming you to Short of Source classes and today we are looking at the IIT JAM Economics 2023 question number 16. So y equals to y of x be a solution curve of the differential equation this. If y of 1 is e square, y of 2 is alpha then the value of dy by dx at 2 comma alpha is equals to how much. Now if you check over here from this given differential equation we can write dy by dx is equals to y by x log of y by x. So the value of this derivative dy by dx at the point 2 comma alpha would be alpha by 2 log of alpha by 2 if we directly replace the point in the differential equation but none of the options match so we need to simplify a little bit further to have some alternative expression for this. So let us try to solve this differential equation. So dy by dx is equals to y by x log of y by x. So what we'll do? We'll take y by x is equals to v because it's a homogeneous system. So y equals to v of x. If you differentiate this with respect to x, then you will have dy by dx is equals to v plus x into dv dx. Replacing this in the original differential equation, v plus x into dv dx is equals to v into log v. So taking the v on right, so x times dv dx is equals to v times log v minus 1 rearranging sides to integrate so 1 by v log v minus 1 dv is 1 upon x dx and then integrate this so for the left integral if you take log v minus 1 equals to z then 1 by v dv is equals to dz so that will basically make this integral 1 by z dz is equals to integral 1 by x dx so that means log of mod z is equals to log of mod x plus c. So we can write this constant in a different format. I can write this as log of mod c and z is basically log v minus 1 is equals to log of x into c. So taking one anti-log so that will become log v is y by x minus 1 is equals to x into c. So this is the solution to the differential equation. Now we are given y of 1 is equals to e square. So if you replace this value log of e square by 1 minus 1 is equals to so that will become two minus one is equals to c so c is equals to one therefore log of y by x minus 1 is equals to x. So this is the definite solution that we get. And another condition that is given to us is y of 2 is equals to alpha. So that will put it log of alpha by 2 minus 1 is equals to 2. So what is log of alpha by 2? That value turns out to be 3. So if you replace this 3 over here, log of alpha by 2 is 3. So the solution is 3 alpha by 2 that matches option number D. So question number 16, your correct option is D. Thank you. Now let us come to question number 20 of the IIT JAM Economics paper 2023. For alpha and beta belonging to R, we consider the system of equations. Then four options. For every alpha, beta, alpha equals to beta, the system will be consistent. There exists alpha, beta satisfying alpha minus 2 beta plus 5 equals to 0 for which the system has a unique solution and so 
we need to check for unique then the third option is there exists a unique pair of alpha comma beta for which there are infinitely many solutions and the fourth option is for alpha beta not equals satisfying alpha minus 2 beta plus 5 equals to 0, the system has infinitely many solutions. Okay. So in order to determine the nature of the solutions, we first need to go forward with the checking the coefficient determinant. So that is basically determinant of 1, 3, 5, 1, 1, alpha, 1, 2, beta. If we do the row and column operation, let's say C1 prime is C1 minus C3, C2 prime is C2 minus C3, then this determinant turns out to be 0, 1, 5 minus beta, 0 minus 1 alpha minus beta 1 2 beta and then if you expand along r1 so that is basically becoming alpha minus beta plus 5 minus beta so that is basically alpha minus 2 beta plus 5 so we have this expression in our options, so that is there in option B and option D as well. So if this is not equals to 0, then we have a unique solution. And if this is equals to 0, then there can be two possibilities. Either we'll have infinite solutions or we could have no solutions. So now we need to check the other points as well. So let's say this is my D. So let's say I'm using the Kramer's rule to understand the further properties. So let's compute the determinant D1. The determinant D1 is basically you use for obtaining the value of X. So what we'll do in the determinant D we will replace the first column with the RHS column. So that is basically 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, alpha, 1, 2, beta. Again, doing a similar column operation, C1 prime, C1 minus C3, C2 prime, C2 minus C3. We basically get 0, 0, 3 minus beta. 0 minus 1 alpha minus beta 1 2 0 so now if you expand along the first row so that will become 3 minus beta okay. so if this is equals to 0 that means beta is equals to 3 and this would correspond to infinite solution and if this is not equals to 0 then that would mean beta not equals to 3 and this would correspond to no solution correct now let us check d2 this is the determinant that you will get by replacing the second column with the rhs column of the d determinant so that would become 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, beta. So again, the similar operation, C1 prime is equals to C1 minus C3. C2 prime is equals to C2 minus C3. So that is 0, 1, 5 minus beta. 0, 0, 3 minus beta, 1, 2, beta. And again, expand along row 1. So that is also giving you the same result 3 minus beta. So if this is equals to 0, that would imply beta is equals to 3 corresponding to infinite solution case. And if this is not equals to 0, that would imply beta not equals to 3 and this would imply no solution. And finally, the determinant D3. 
which is obtained by swapping the third column. So that is 1, 3, 5, 1, 1, alpha, 1, 2, 3. Same set of operations. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 0, minus 1, alpha, minus 3, 1, 2, 3. So if you expand along R1, so that would be alpha minus 3 plus 2, that is alpha minus 1. If this is equals to 0, that would mean alpha equals to 1, corresponding to infinite solution. And if this is not equals to 0, then alpha not equals to 1, corresponding to no solution. Correct. So if you look at the observations carefully, if alpha minus 2 beta plus 5 is equals to 0, this could have led to either of the cases of infinite and no solutions. So if we move on with the infinite solutions from the corresponding determinants, we see that beta equals to 3 and alpha equals to 1 are the particular values of alpha and beta that will ensure infinite solution. Correct. So this basically gives you your correct option as C there exists a unique pair of alpha and beta which is obtained as 1 and 3 for which the system has infinitely many solutions because if you put alpha as 1 and beta as 3 so I'll, in this condition for the value of d to be 0 then you will see that it is actually matching so that is basically 1 minus 2 into 3 plus 5 which is equal to 0 so if beta equals to 3 and alpha equals to 1, then the determinant d is also becoming 0. So alpha equals to 1 and beta equals to 3 ensures that the system will have infinitely many solutions. So that gives you your option as C. Thank you.